This is section 1.3 about adding and subtracting whole numbers. When we add two numbers like 3 and 4 and get an answer like 7, we have names for the different pieces of the expression. So the 3 and the 4, since they're the two things that we're adding, are both called addends, and the 7 is called the sum. In this video, we're going to talk about several different properties of addition and subtraction. The first one is the addition property of 0. And this just says that the sum of 0 in any number is that number. So for example, 8 plus 0 equals 8, and 0 plus 8 equals 8. The next one is the commutative property of addition. This says that changing the order in which we add two things does not change the sum that we end up with. So we can look at the sum of 4 and 2 in two different ways. 4 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 4. They both come out to be 6. Next is the associative property of addition. This says that changing the grouping of things that we're adding doesn't change their sum. So for example, if we're adding three numbers together, we could do it this way, where we're grouping the last two together with parentheses. That says that we need to add the 4 and the 2 first, and then add that result to the 3. So 4 plus 2 is 6, and then we add the 3 and the 6 to get 9. The associative property says that we could also do it this way. We could group the 3 and the 4 together inside parentheses so that we would add those first and then add the 2 to that. And we would still get the same answer of 9. Oh, there are two subtraction properties of 0. The first one is that the difference of any number and that same number is 0. If you subtract 9 from itself, for example, you're going to get 0. The second property is that the difference of any number in 0 is that same number. So for example, if we take 7 and subtract 0, we're going to get 7. Let's do some examples. First, we're just going to add 3 and 9, which will give us 12. Next, 40 plus 70. And I'm going to write these addition problems in column form. And notice how I'm lining up the ones digits and I'm lining up the tens digits. So 0 plus 0 is 0. And then when we add the 4 and the 7, we get 11. Since that's 10 or more, we write down the ones unit and we carry the tens unit into the next column. So here we would add the 1. We don't have anything to add it to, so we just bring the 1 down. So our answer for this is 110. For this one, we're actually using the addition property of 0 because we're adding 0 to another number. So in this case, we're just going to get that number back. So our answer here would be 5,703. Here's one that's already written for us in column form. And again, notice how the 1's digits are lined up and the 10's digits are lined up. So we can just add the 1 and the 7, the 1's digits, and get 8. And then we add the 5 and the 2 to get 7. So our answer is 78. For this last one, we could use the associative property. We could group, for example, the 93 and the 145 together and add those first and then add the 69. Or we could add the 145 and the 69 first and then add that to the 93. But for this one, I'm going to do this one in columns also. So we have our units digits lined up, our tens digits lined up. First with our units, we have 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 9 is 17. So we're going to write down the ones unit of that and carry the tens digit to the next column. So we have 1 plus 9 is 10. And then here's where we can use our associative property. If we add together 1 plus 9 here, we get 10. If we add together the 4 and the 6 here, we get another 10. So we could Think of that as being 10 plus 10, so that's going to give us 20. Again, we're going to write down the 1's unit and carry the 10's unit to the next column. So that gives us a 2 up here, and then we have 2 plus 1 is going to be 3. So our answer for this one is 307. Here's a helpful hint when we're doing subtraction problems. Since subtraction and addition are reverse operations, don't forget that you can check a subtraction problem by adding. So here's some subtraction problems we're going to do, and then we're going to check them by adding. So if we take 11 and subtract 7, we're going to get 4. And if we want to check that, then we would add the 4 and the 7. And if we've 
done this correctly, we should get 11. So if we add 4 and 7, we get 11. For this next one, we're using one of the subtraction properties of 0, and that is that if you subtract a number from itself, you get 0. So 22 minus 22 would equal 0. We could even check this one if we wanted to by adding 0 and 22, and we should get 22 for an answer. Okay, this next one is already written out in column form for us. So our digits are pretty much lined up here. So we're going to subtract 4 from 8 and get 4. Then in the tens column, 9 minus 9 is going to be 0. And then in the hundreds column, we have 1 minus 0 is going to equal 1. So the answer we got was 104. If we want to check this, then we would add the 104 to the 94. So we got 198. So our answer did check. Okay, in this last one, we're going to have to do some borrowing because first of all, 5 is bigger than 4. So we're going to have to borrow from the tens column here. So when we do that, we're actually going to have to make this a 10 so that we can do the borrowing and get a 9. When we did that, we actually borrowed from this column. So we have to do the same thing again. We have to make that a 10. And then we're borrowing, so we make that a 9. And finally, we borrowed one from this column, so we have to make that a 2. Now we can actually do the subtraction. So we would have 14 minus 5 would be 9. 9 minus 6 would be 3. 9 minus 7 would be 2. And 2 minus 2 would be 0. So our answer would be 239. And if we want to check this, then we would take 239 and we would add the 2,765. So we're going to get 14 there, carry the 1, and then we get 4 plus 6 is 10, carry the 1 again, and we have 3 plus 7 is 10. So we have 0 there and carry the 1, and 1 plus 2 gives us 3. So this checks with our original, what we had in our original problem. When we do word problems, we want to be able to pick out keywords or phrases that signal us to do addition. So here's a, a good list of these words and phrases. We have added to, plus, more than, total, increased by, and sum. Those all signal for us to do addition. So we've got several examples here. 3 added to 9 would be 3 plus 9, 5 plus 22, 7 more than 8. The total of 6 and 5 would be the same as 6 plus 5. 16 increased by 7 is the same as 16 plus 7. And the sum of 50 and 11 tells us to add 50 plus 11. And here's some key words that signal subtraction. Subtraction can be a little bit harder because it does make a difference which order you write the numbers in. In this one, when we say subtract 3 from 9, actually the 9 goes first because we're taking the 9 and subtracting 3 from it. The order is switched from the way it's written in the problem. When we do the difference of 8 and 2, that notice comes out in the same order. The numbers are in the same order that they were there. 12 less 8 is the same way. We have the same order. So is 14 take away 9 and 16 decreased by 7. And we have one here where we have 5 subtracted from 9. That one again you have to put the 9 first and then the 5 because you're starting with the 9 and you're subtracting 5 from it. As we just saw, the order does matter when you're subtracting. It doesn't matter when you're adding. For example, 10 minus 3 and 3 minus 10 would not give us the same answer. Here's some word problems. What is the sum of 8,932 and 14,799? Sum, again, tells us to add. So that's the keyword we're looking for that tells us to add these two numbers. So 2 plus 9 is 11. Write down the 1 and carry the 1. Then 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 9 is 13. So we write down the 3 and carry the 1. 1 plus 9 is 10, 
plus 7 is 17. So we write down the 7, carry the 1. 1 plus 8 is 9, plus 4 is 13. So we write down the 3 and carry the 1, and then 1 plus 1 is 2. So our sum is 23,731. Now in this one, we're using the subtract from wording, which means that we have to put the numbers in the opposite order from what they appear here. So this means that we're actually taking 803 minus 376. So if we write this out in our columns, then notice here we're going to have to borrow because 6 is bigger than 3. So that's going to be 13. Then we have to make this a 10 and borrow so we get 9. And then we have to borrow there. So we have to make that a 7. So now we have 13 minus 6 is 7. 9 minus 7 is 2. And 7 minus 3 is 4. OK, finally, the library renovation project project has set a goal of $75,000 to fundraise. To date, $47,908 has been fundraised. How much more money does the project need to raise? So if we want to get a total of $75,000, we already have part of that. We need to know what the remaining amount is. So we're going to subtract our $47,908 from the $75,000. And when we say subtract from, remember, we have to put the last number first, so that means we're taking 75,000 minus our 47,908. Okay, we have to borrow here and again here and again here. and there. So now if we start subtracting, we have 10 minus 8 is 2, 9 minus 0 is 9, 9 minus 9 is 0. Now when we have 4 minus 7, we're going to have to borrow again there. So we make that a 14, and then we borrowed from this column, so we have to make that a 6. So now we have 14 minus 7 is 7, and 6 minus 4 is 2. Our answer is 27092 so we would say the project needs to raise $27,092. Here are a couple more word problems. On Monday, Karen drove 57 miles. On Tuesday, she drove 39 miles. And on Wednesday, Karen drove 92 miles. How many total miles did Karen drive? Once again, we're looking for some keywords and one of our keywords for addition was total. So that right there gives us a clue that we should be adding. So if we want the total miles she drove, then we're going to take the 57 plus the 39 plus the 92. So here we have 7 plus 9 is 16 plus another 2 is 18. Carrying the 1, 1 plus 5 is 6 plus 3 is 9 plus another 9 is 18. So we're carrying the 1 again. So we get an answer of 188. She drove a total of 188 miles. And finally, we have a bar graph. Notice that this is the number of Best Picture nominees divided up by their different ratings. And the question is, how many more Best Picture nominees have R ratings than PG ratings? If we look at those two, the R ratings, there were 52 of those. And the movies with the PG ratings had 16. So if we want to know how much more the 52 is than the 16, we're going to have to subtract. So what we want to do is subtract 16 from 52. We're going to have to borrow here. So now we have 12 minus 6 is 6, and 4 minus 1 is 3. So our answer is 36. That means there were 36 more Best Picture nominees that had R ratings than there were that had PG ratings.